Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on combination sum 2. And in this one you're given a collection of candidates and a target and you want to find all unique combinations whose sum add up to the target. And every number in the candidates may only be used once. So in this first example you have these and the second one you have these. And the target's kind of small so if you think about it like you're not going to have that many different things even though the candidates is long. Um, you can only use at most 30 numbers like if they're all ones you'd use 30 numbers but if there's if they're all ones you'd only have one solution so if you have a bunch of distinct numbers then you're going to have a lot less than 30 and then you can have like multiple solutions and so on but basically um yeah the constraints are kind of small here and it's not going to be relative to this it's more going to be relative to this also if all like if you can only use unique numbers um these numbers will get above 30 pretty fast like you can't just use a bunch of ones and twos or something. Well, you can, but then you're not going to have like that many different solutions there. Um, okay. So the way to do this efficiently is ideally we want to be able to put these in. And then once we get to an invalid state, we want to be able to recognize as fast as we can. So we don't want to have to like fill this whole thing up and then realize like, oh, we screwed up like, or do we want to trim our searches as much as possible because every search we're going to do so many times. Um, trimming things is going to be a lot faster. So what we can do is we can have this example where we can actually sort our numbers. And then if we're looking for a target and we're on, we're on some number, like let's say we're on this number here and our target is like three, we know that if this doesn't work, none of this works too. So as soon as one number doesn't work, everything above it won't work either. So that's why sorting helps. And you can use sorting because the big O complexity of the solution is going to be way worse than um, n log n. So anytime that's the case, then sorting is basically free. So what we can do is we can sort and we can just say like, okay, let's just try to put in the first number and then let's recurse and update our target. So then let's just keep trying to put in the number and let's recurse and update our target. And let's put in this number and recurse. And then here, our number is too big so this solution, and then we're going to be using this array to build up the solution. Then we can just take a copy of it and put it into the result every time it's successful. This is too big. So now we have to rec recurse back and update our new target back to six. And because the solution with two didn't work, then we have to actually pop our two and then try another number. So we have to update our target again, or actually no, this will be six. Because like this two, nothing with two works, right? Because with two, we're, we're looking for a four, nothing with two works. So we're gonna recurse back to this state and we're gonna say, okay, two doesn't work, let's try the five. Okay, so we put in a five. And now our new, um, our new total is a one. And then when we recurse here, nothing works again. So we're gonna recurse back and we're gonna say five doesn't work either. So let's try six. So six works. So this is like one solution. We're going to take this and put a copy of it into the result. And then we're going to recurse back out because of then our target, like once we put in the six, our target will be zero. So anytime we hit our target, we're just going to take our current array and put it into the result. And then we're going to recurse back out of here, back to, uh, yeah, so we're going to recurse back out of the six. And then when we try anything bigger than six, it won't work. So we're done there. Then we're going to recurse back to this step because we tried everything with a one and a one. So we're going to recurse back to this step and we're going to say, okay, maybe we'll try a one and a two. And then we'll recurse here and we'll say, okay, let's try a five. I'm not going to keep updating this target because it's going to be pretty easy to calculate like what we need. So we're going to put in the five and then we're going to say, okay, let's recurse over here. We need a one. This is too big. So because this is too big, five doesn't work. So if five doesn't work. None of these work. So nothing with a two works here. So, or actually, sorry, five, five, five doesn't work, but six does work, right? So six will work and that will give us, uh, or actually, sorry, five, five does work. Yeah, five does work because this is actually eight. So this is another solution. And then when we, when we go back and we get rid of the five and put in the six and six doesn't work. And if six is too big, like we don't, we won't even put in the six. We'll just say like, okay, we're looking for eight. We're looking for a total of five left. Let's try to put it in the six. Um, and if six is too big, then like none of these are going to work. So then we tried everything with a one and a two. So we're going to get rid of the two and then we're going to go back to where we were, uh, which is here. So now we'll try one and a five 
and nothing with a 1 and a 5 is going to work. So we can pop the 5, then we'll try a 1 and a 6. Nothing with a 1 and a 6 is going to work. And notice we're only going to next states. Like when we try 1 and a 6, we're not going to try like a 1, a 6, and a 1. That's how you avoid duplicates. We're only going to put in like increasingly bigger numbers that will help us avoid duplicates. Um, so 1 and 6 is not going to work. 1 and 7 will. And then 1 and 10 is too big. So everything with this 1 doesn't work. Now here's the other important part. So we tried everything that starts with a 1. As soon as we try everything with a number and we say, okay, we will skip that number. If that number repeats, we will also skip all of those copies because we don't want to like ha take this one and add a two and a five, right? Because that would give us the same thing. So if we use a number, we'll use it and then we'll move on to the next index. But if we say we won't use a number, we won't use every single number that's the same. And that's how we avoid duplicates. And we will also only use bigger numbers. So once we try this one, we're gonna say we're not using this because that'll just give our duplicates. So let's start here. So we'll try two, two and a five won't give you anything. Two and a six works. So this is last one. And then seven's too big. So nothing else with a two works. Then we'll try everything with a five. Nothing will work there. We'll try everything with six, seven, and so on. And so the basic template you're going to have is you're going to have like a result nested array. And then you're going to have a current array that we will fill up in our backtracking algorithm. So we will basically add an element, recurse, and then once we come back, we'll pop the element again. So we're going to use this 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 um, dynamic array to fill it up. And then once we have the target we're looking for, we'll just take a copy and put it into the result. And I'll show you like a backtracking template you can use for everything now in the code. Okay. So we're going to want to sort our candidates, first of all. And then we can take these two arrays and just make them class variables to make it easier to uh, to make it easier to refer to them everything else. So we'll have our result and the current array that we're going to be using in our backtracking. So this is the, like the template you have. You have your result array. It's going to be nested in your current array. And for all these like combinations, permutations, all this, you can use this kind of template. So sort. Then we just call backtrack. Sometimes you need to give it an index. Sometimes you need to give it some other stuff. So in this case, we need to give it an index, which is zero. And we need to give it the candidates array. And we need to give it the target. And then we can return the result. And now we can just write our backtrack. And for almost all these combinations, permutations, and stuff, the code is going to be very similar. It, it just depends, like, do you want to reuse numbers? Do you not? How, like, what's considered duplicates? All that stuff. So it's like slight modifications there. So we're going to have a private function. It'll basically always be void because we're just going to modify this current variable and then add it to the result. So we're going to take um, uh, interray candidates and a target. Okay, so if the target equals zero, that means our array is a valid array. So we just put it into the result. So. And I think you can just do this. Now, the reason you want to add a copy into your result is because, um, I'll just show you here. So let's say our array is this. And our result is like, you know, this like thing here. And we just say, okay, let's just add this array into the result. We're going to keep modifying this array. So if you pop from here, then because this, this thing in the result is this array, this will get modified as well. So that's why you add a copy because we're going to keep modifying this. So you don't want what you added here to change. So if we add a copy, then when we can modify this freely and this will stay the same. Otherwise, what's going to happen if you keep adding your array, you'll basically have a bunch of empty arrays at the end because all of them will have a reference to the same array and then you're going to pop everything at the end. So you can try that if you want. So we need to add a copy and return. And now we need to write our case where we're actually traversing all our elements, doing the backtrack, and then popping. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for, uh, we forgot one thing. We need to give an index. So OK. So we need to avoid duplicates. So we can just say, like, if j is not i, 
like if we if we are on the second number or later right like in this case if we're on like the second one or later and it's the same as the previous number so we could say like if j does not equal i and candidates j equals candidates i we don't need to do anything because this would just give us a duplicate right so like if we did everything with this original one and then we're on the second one we don't want to use that as a start we do want to use it if it's going to be like the first number we add but the first number we add in each backtracking is going to be at index i so once it's not at index i that means we like tried something popped and then tried something else and in that case you don't want to reuse numbers okay so this will get rid of duplicates um and then the other way to get rid of duplicates that we also need is we're gonna have our numbers in increasing order only. So you won't have something like 161 and also 611. So we're gonna have everything in increasing order only and if we use the number and we don't wanna use the one that's the same. And th those are really common in like DP and all the other problems to avoid duplicates is you only have numbers in increasing order and if you use the number, make sure you don't use it again and you have them all sorted. Okay, so if candidates j is greater than the target so if our number is greater than the target we're basically done with this loop we can just return actually because if we have an array that we're filling up and let's say our target is like three and we're on this number these will all be too big so we're basically done like we, we don't need to look through any of these other ones so we're basically done Okay, and then the other case is we're gonna add this number to our array. So we're gonna say uh, cur is gonna be our array that we're gonna keep modifying. So we're gonna add candidates i. And then we wanna start searching at the next number after this because we don't wanna reuse the same number. So we'll say backtrack. Oh, this is actually not i, this is j. Backtrack j plus one um, candidates. And then our updated target will be target minus candidates j. And then we don't need to like return anything in here. This will be a void function. And we're just modifying our current array and then putting the copying to the results. This is your template. You have your result, your current array, you initialize them both and you just call backtrack. And then the first part of the function is gonna have some kind of condition that's like, if your current array is a valid result, add it to the end and then return. And then this is like your logic for adding things to your current array, backtracking, and then once you backtrack and you're done, then you want to remove what you did because that's the whole idea of backtracking, right? You do something, you test something, and then you remove it, so. And that should be it. So pretty simple. And you can use this to do like all the permutations, combinations. You just have to change something slightly. And the two general um, ways you could do backtracking is there's a loop variation, which we did, or there's a take or not take. So for every index you will say let's add it to my array let's backtrack let's remove it from my array and let's backtrack again without adding it to their array so those are the two versions take or not take or a loop in which case our our thing is a loop okay um, okay let's see our errors this cur isn't oh because we didn't so we didn't initialize them so we need to do that So this is an array list, and so is this. Okay. Ooh, okay, so let's see what we did wrong here. So we have a duplicate output, looks like. Yeah, we have a 3.5 and a 3.5 again. So this should if j does not equal i and candidates j, oh, right, this is not candidates j. This is, so you wanna check if your value is equal to the previous value, not the first value. Even though I don't think it'll matter. No, it will matter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, because let's say you're picking like what's the first value to put in. Um, so let's say we're like here. So the i value will be one you want to use this value, but then when you backtrack and you don't use this value, then you don't want to use this one. Then you want to use this one, but then you don't want to use this one. And this is not the same as this value. So hopefully that makes sense. 
so this should be this. Okay. All right, and then, so theoretically, um, basically for every number we have, a, we still have a take or not take, or like regardless of if you write it in a loop or not, you basically have the same thing. So technically this is this, but in reality, it'll be a lot less than this because like I think two to the 30 is gonna be, is gonna fail. But like I said, in reality, you have way less than that because it's limited to your target. And if the target is 30, um, and you have all ones, you'll only have one solution, so that'll be O of N. Um, and if you have like a bunch of ones and twos, you'll have more, but basically it'll, in reality, it'll be a lot less than this. So that's usually backtracking time complexity is every number you ever take or not take choice. Um, yeah, but yeah, like I said, in, in, in actuality, depending on your constraints, it'll be a lot less. Like if you did, if you were allowed to reuse duplicates here, it would be bigger. And that, that's kind of obvious, right? Like if you can use duplicates, you'll just have more outputs. So the more outputs you can have, the bigger, the longer the solution takes. Um, and then here, so you don't count the result and then your current array can only be the length of candidates, but it actually can't be the length of candidates. Like I said, it's basically the length of the target. So we'll say like target, because if candidates is a hundred, um, we're only adding numbers that like, we're, if, our, if, our if we overshoot our target, we're just gonna stop. So because the target's 30, worst case you have 30 ones. Okay. And yeah, this, this is negligible because this is like covered by that. Um, yeah, so I think that's gonna be all for this one. You can maybe make some optimizations. Generally some optimizations you can make to backtracking is A, either t change it into DP or B, have backtracking with caching. You can do that as well. So if you hit a state that you were at before um, maybe save like sub arrays or something for that state that will speed it up. I guess you can probably do it for this. Like, like for example, if your target's the same and you're on the same number, then you can save like the, all those arrays or something like that. There's probably a way to do it like that too. So those are some things to look for. If you want to make things more efficient is you can add caching or convert the DP. Sometimes backtracking is to fit more efficient. Sometimes DP, they're both roughly the same for these types of problems. Also, you can't do like pure DP, I guess here, because typically you'd want to use DP more where you're just counting a number, where if you want to actually get all the arrays, then backtracking is better. Oh yeah, but I think I talked about the main things to look for and the main things to know for these types of problems. So hopefully it was helpful. If it was, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.